Welcome to Play Therapy Community Podcast, providing connection, information, and inspiration to child therapists all around the world. Here's your host, a licensed psychotherapist, a registered play therapist, and my mom, Jackie Flynn. Well, thank you so much for listening to another episode of Play Therapy Community Podcast. I'm super excited about today's episode with Tammy Van Hollander. If you've listened to the podcast before, you know I'm a huge fan. So today's um, no exception with the information that we're going to learn from her. Before we get started, though, I want to tell you about something that Marshall Lyles and Dr. Linda Holmeyer have coming up. They are the gurus on Sand Tray. He has, Marshall Lyles has a workshop right there in Texas that is just incredible. So um, January 18th to the 21st, 2024, there is a training with Dr. Holmeyer and Marshall Lyles right there at his workshop. It's 24 live instruction contact association for play therapy CEs. I'm reading right from his website. So it sounds like it's, I'm reading. I am. Um, it's called Sand Tray Therapy Basics an expressive play therapy approach for clients of all ages. So if you're at all interested in Sandra, I highly recommend this course. Marshall and Dr. Lohmeyer literally wrote the book. (laughs) So you can find that at marshalliles.com. There's lots of L's in there. He's like, uh, don't get carried away with the L's. There's so many. So just Google Marshall Lyles Sandra, go to his website and look for that training. And I'll put the link in the show notes below. Okay, so without further ado, I want to introduce you to uh, Tammy Van Hollander. Um, I first learned of Tammy through her YouTube channel years ago. I was going to University of Central Florida for my grad school program, and um, I would watch hers and Pam Tyson's videos right there in the uh, parking garage. It gives me chills just thinking about it. And daydreaming, I remember even thinking, daydream about having an office with just shelves of toys on my walls like hers and like you know I knew then that there were toys but I learned from her that they're called miniatures some people call them miniatures and since then I've learned a lot from her and still learning from her and uh, I'm on her on her my friend now which is crazy exciting so Tammy for those who don't know who you are which is probably no one because everyone knows Tammy Van Hollander um, if you could introduce yourself, just tell people who you are and what you do. Sure. So I am a registered play therapy supervisor and a licensed clinical social worker. And I have a practice right outside of Philadelphia. And when I was looking to expand my practice, I really wanted all play therapists. And it was really hard to find play therapists. And I knew that if I wanted to expand this practice, I wanted people who were going to be doing this bottom up approach when working with children. So I have this beautiful team of expressive therapists. So now we are an expressive therapy center and I have dance and movement therapists and music therapists and art therapists and play therapists. And it is just a dream come true to be with all of these great minds who understand that we need to first work with these kids' bodies and being able to just be in the same arena under the same umbrella, but we all have such a different skill set that we provide each other. So um, it's super exciting to be able to be doing that. And um, now that I have my team, it gives me more time to be doing a lot of parent coaching. I'm an advanced nurtured heart approach trainer and sand tray is my jam. So I do sand tray trainings and we'll be talking about retreats and being able, I mean, Jackie, you know that my, I'm so passionate about play therapy and sand tray and the work that I do just like you are, that it's just that we are the messenger to be able to get to our voice out there to as many people as possible to recognize the power of this work. And I'm always thinking if there's just that one person that that, that gets introduced to play therapy or to sand tray therapy, like we've made that difference in that one person's life. So um, I just finished my second year 
presenting with Daniel Sweeney, oh who God. wrote with Linda Homeyer, basically the Bible in sand tray therapy, uh, sand tray therapy, a practical manual. So Daniel Sweeney and I just did our second year presenting a, gosh, 14, it was a very long class uh, in China. So, we, and it was a very first class in sand tray therapy um, for China. They've been trained in sand play, but never in sand uh, tray. So it was so amazing to watch their sand trays and see the differences culturally, as well as the similarities. And so that was also a really cool experience. Well, I could hear the passion in your voice, even talking about it. And I think about like, you say make a difference in one person's life that changes people for generations to come. I mean, you made a difference in my life just sharing about it. I don't you know, my first introduction to it. I don't know if I would have um, went that direction without your video. So I can imagine being a client or, you know, another clinician. That's beautiful right there in China too. Cool. Online, right? So they can online, online, but once things settle down, I uh, maybe take a good trip out there to be able to do it live. And that's, you know, that's, that's really the hope for, to just be able to travel there and to be able to do it in person. I mean, it's, it's been amazing how well some of the sand tray training has gone online and being able to do dyads and different pieces, but it's nothing like being in person. And uh, so I'm so excited that I have in-person things coming up where <laughs> we can touch the sand, we could touch each other, we can give hugs. And um, I'm just so looking forward to that. Okay. So when you go to China, you need to FaceTime me so I can see what it looks like. <laughs> okay. Okay. It will be 12 hours difference, but I will do that. I'll wake up in the middle of the night for it. Hey, um, so as you're saying that, I'm thinking about you have a at the time of this recording, it's July 31st, 2023. You have a retreat coming up, a play therapy retreat. Is that right? I do. I do. I am super excited about this. I guess three years ago, maybe I did a very similar retreat. This was a retreat with Pessy and it was in North Carolina and it was an amazing retreat. I still keep in touch with the people um, from that retreat. So this one I am super excited about. It is in the Catskills Mountains and this place is called Honors Haven. And there's a full spa there. There's a oh. huge walking labyrinth. There's like this 21 step. Walking um, labyrinth. That's right up your alley. It's right up my alley. Jackie, you know how much I love labyrinths. And then there's this 21 step that you walk up each step as you're going through the different phases almost of your life. So I'm hoping to incorporate that. I wrote it down so I remembered. So the title though is, is the, the Play Therapy Retreat, Repair Trauma, Strengthen Relationships Through Attachment, Attunement, and oh. Co-Regulation. Oh my goodness. And I, you know, when I always think of this work, I always go back to Bruce Purry's three R's of, right, the, the regulate, the relate, and then reason. Mm -hmm. And I, it's really so much of this piece I just presented for um, the Oklahoma APT and really how are we first really starting, right? This bottom up approach and we're starting with these attachment based pieces, but first understanding it and understanding the regulation pieces and understanding the polyvagal pieces. So many of those pieces, Jackie, that I have learned from you and really having this training be a bottom-up approach. How are we starting with our bodies, then moving into sand tray and working on sand tray and working on expressive arts and bringing all the beautiful benefits of nature into it and how you could bring nature into your own practice and then being able to then get to that point where we can get to the reason, where we can then make sense, right, of our narrative, make sense of the play, to then take that body pieces to make it a skill set, to empower and to help 
our clinicians, our teachers, our parents, and most importantly, these kids to understand their bodies. Yeah. Yeah. To be able to, to, to move forward and have that skill set. We can't just tell kids to stop behaving, right? In certain ways, we need to understand what's going on with their bodies for them to be in sync and for them to understand that because kids are always being told, you can't do this, you can't do that. And we expect so much of our children when like we're not regulated, right? <laughs> so it's it's just our expectations are so high and we just have to shift our narrative and so much shift our lens of how we view one another and how we view our children. Yeah. And the behaviors are rooted in some, you know, their adaptations. Oh my goodness. So this is going to be a crazy question, but where are the Catskills Mountains? Where is Yes. The Catskill Mountains, I guess it's right outside of New York City and it is Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite places. I've been out to the Catskills. It is just absolutely breathtaking. And it's going to be five days. And the cool thing about the five days is that when I did in North Carolina, I presented from nine to 430 or even more. But this one, it's like much shorter in the morning and in the afternoon. So I there may be, I think there's a yoke. Yeah, there's free time and there's yoga and I have a TED talk coming up in uh, October. So I'm like, we'll be, so we'll be practicing. So I'll, I'll be practicing that for the free time. Whoever wants to listen to it, and I'm going to be bringing my virtual reality during the free time. Oh, I got one. I got an Oculus. I forgot to tell you. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so distracted. What? No, we're recording. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption, but I have one now. Also, so now, so now, now we could go on together. So you know how much through Dr. Jessica Stone's training, the digital play therapy was another game changer for my practice. So Literally. this is going to be, yeah. So it's going to be more in the free time that we're going to be doing, um, yeah, some of the VR stuff and just, just all the cool stuff that you know almost 25 years of experience of that, of just stuff that I love and that I know kids love. And many of the creation, many of the activities the kids have created, right? It's always that way. They, they're our best teachers. Um, if somebody wanted to register, where, how did they register for that? Mm-hmm. Well, we can add a link to it. Oh. And I have a special uh, link that will also give, if you put in the code Tammy 300, you get $300 off. So oh. I'm not sure for how long it will last during this recording, but we will make sure that those who are interested will be able to try to get that discount. Tammy with an I. Right. Take Tammy take. with an I. Tammy 300. Tammy 300. All right. Okay. So sand tray therapy. We we recorded a previous episode years ago when the podcast was new. And, um, you know, we've recorded several YouTube videos since then. But I'm wondering if we could cover, like, why sand tray? Like, what, sure. what is the, like, why would someone choose to do sand tray therapy? What, what are the benefits and the reasons? Right. And I'd like to first, if it's okay, Jackie, like piggyback a little on this TEDx talk, because this is really a dream come true. And to be able to do a TEDx talk on the title is Stories in the Sand, Healing Trauma, Anxiety, and Grief. And there's never been a TEDx talk on Sand Tray. Because it was saved up for Tammy Van Hollander. (laughs) So it's so exciting, but there's right this pressure in terms of of being able to, in a very short time time span, being able to really share the power of this work. And that sand tray can be used with clients of all ages. And it is connecting our conscious mind and our unconscious mind Mm -hmm. that are in conflict, right? And by just being able to place these small toys that we call miniatures into the sand, we're able to resolve these conflicts. There are so many things that we 
feelings and, and narratives and trauma that we store in our body. And without even thinking, our right brain, right? Our creative brain, our imaginative brain, we'll pick these miniatures and just place them in the sand. I mean, you know the power of that, Jackie. Yeah. And then you're like, I don't know what I'm picking, right? (laughs) And, And not recognizing these different pieces. And then they're in the sand and they have a voice and they have a narrative and the different miniatures can begin to dialogue with each other. And it begins to make sense of our world. And just by moving the miniatures, we are creating that brain and body connection into the therapy experience. That shifts. That is amazing. I mean, I've done it myself and seen maybe countless sessions to where clients don't even know why they're picking one of the miniatures. And it has such meaning that just is like a, a big kind of opening into the world. It's incredible. Yeah. And what's so cool is it, you know, when people are creating their own sand tray, they're like, wow, I feel weird, right? I feel it in my body or I feel it in my stomach or my arms are, are tingling. Right. And it is this full body experience being able to integrate the right hemisphere of the brain, that creative part of the brain to then make logic to it, right? To create it and then for it to have a narrative to make sense in that logical world. And it's just this beautiful duality of of the two and being able to just create order to the chaos, to be able to bury, to be able to trap, to be able to compartmentalize right? The pieces in our brain, if the sand tray is a representation of our brain, we can create some type of order. And for me, Jackie, I know you feel the same way, not trying to out you. We have a lot going on in our brains. Fireworks. (laughs) Fireworks. So I use this term flumping. I created the word flumping. And flumping is when your brain is feeling absolutely flooded, And we just need to dump, whether we're dumping in the playroom or whether we're dumping a ton of miniatures in the sand tray. It's just, we need it. We need to just kind of vomit all of this toxicity, all of this stuff out of us. And then we could begin to organize it. We could take out what we don't need. We can put fences, we could put traps and We have this sense because we are physically organizing it, right? And it is bringing those two different worlds together that. Bottom to the top. Bottom to the top. That's amazing. I remember in grad school when I first learned about, I didn't know. And when they showed us, I I have to say, like in the beginning, I was like, ah. I'm silly, you know, here I am. Adult. So I picked out the miniatures and put them inside the sand tray when we were processing them. I um I picked out like a motorcycle and like little toys and little rocks that shined and everything and just kind of not even, I literally didn't have any meaning for any of it. And then in the activity, um, the, you know, my partner, which was the therapist and I was the client in the, in the uh, activity, she's like, tell me about this part. I was like, oh, I put the motorcycle in there and just kind of it fell over and it was in the sand. I was like, you know, I don't know why I put that in there. I don't know anybody that uh, rides a motorcycle other than my dad that just got diagnosed with cancer, but he doesn't ride it anymore. It, and I thought, oh, my God, it's laying over. And a big flood of emotion came up and I didn't even know it was in there. I had no way. I, so if I went to like talk therapy, I wouldn't have even known to talk about that because I was kind of cognitively, I was like, you know, you know, it, 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 you know, um, he's older. And, you know, I had really rationalized it in my mind. But underneath there was this whole well of pain that that allowed to come out. And then everything had meaning. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this is incredible. Yeah. You don't, just don't even know. You don't even know, and you may create it and think one thing, and then the next day it may mean something else. And they like live in your brain, and these stories 
just become a part of you. And it's just amazing that we can do sand tray with families. We could do sand tray with couples. I talk about a case in the TEDx talk of a child who had a trauma, but then the parents were able to come in because they weren't there when it happened and change the narrative and create safety and really for the child to then be able to internalize that felt sense of safety, that we're able to bring families or bring people into their stories to be able to create that safety that they didn't have or that witnessing that they weren't a part of when these events occurred, which is just so an unbelievably powerful. Oh my goodness. So, oh my goodness, that's beautiful. That's the difference between like whether one's traumatized or not, whether they're alone or whether they're with someone that can co-regulate with them at the time. So they're having that experience when not only in the, like the presence of the therapist, but with the parent so that they're no longer alone fully in that memory for the power of integration that goes with that. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. So you get to pick out the stories for your TEDx talk. Oh my goodness, that's so cool. Or do they uh, you coach you through it or do they tell you how many stories to tell? Um, they, I, um, yeah, I worked really, really, really hard. I think it was probably one of the biggest challenges of my life. Um, I worked with a, um, a, a TEDx coach in LA to really be able to, you know, I've been presenting for way over 20 years, but I have never had to present with a script. I have never had to present to people who know nothing about therapy. Oh, and yeah. Being able to try to explain, I mean, in general, gosh, how can words, you know, once you do a sand tray, to explain the power of a sand tray. And to be able to do it in 14 to 18 minutes <laughs> and for it to truly land That'd be powerful. was so, so difficult. But I feel like, you know, my slide deck is almost done. And I am going to say that what in one of the slides and the anxiety slide, Jackie's daughter <laughs> painted a rock of a mouth. And that rock is in... Um, is in one of the slides. You'll see a lot of miniatures also from Mama Al Minis. You may see some of Marshall's miniatures. Um, I had to really, there's often not a lot of slides in TEDx um, talks, but I did have to add a good amount of really showing that a picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah, I, I can't. I'm not even saying this because it's you. I can't imagine a more fitting person on the planet than you to, to deliver this because it's like in every cell of your body. I, I can't wait to tell Angel about her rock is going to make it on the big screen. <laughs> it's on the TEDx stage. <laughs> there we go. It's the, um, uh, my big mouth rock or something like that, or uh, my voice rock or something. Or what I guess it could be what anybody wants it to be. Um, yeah, well, that rock. But I think that's such a good, just even talking about sand tray and a rock with a mouth, right? When there are no words and we have this rock with a mouth. And Marshall, who you just spoke about, who we love, and, you know, Marshall will talk about putting an eye in the tray, the eye of the witness within the sand tray. So being able to to pick miniatures that represent being a witness, to represent having a voice when there are no words, right? It's just so powerful to really promote that curiosity and that healing. And not alone like that, like I'm not alone. I didn't know about the eye because Angel does eyeballs too. I'll bring him some eyeballs when I I'm going there next weekend to do the EMDR and sand tray integrated training. Nice. Um, I'm excited. It's <laughs> gonna be great. I wish I could attend that one. I wish so too. There's like three places you could be at any given time. Where <laughs> it's um, true. Now at this retreat that you're doing, are y'all doing sand tray there too? Yes, I'm gonna be. Um, 
bringing, yeah, I'm going to be bringing a bunch of supplies and um, yeah, we're going to be doing is I'm going to get as much sand tray as I can. You know, I do so much with sand tray. So I'm going to be, we're going to do one full day all on sand tray and we'll still probably be an overlap of even more sand tray. I'm actually next week going to be presenting it with a small group of um a, a counselors in um, right outside of Vail, Colorado. And they, it's so amazing. This group, there's 21 of them. They all work in different schools and they bought sand trays, sand and starter kits for everybody in my training. So I was like, wow. So we may not have that, but I'm going to be bringing a lot of stuff and sand. And I'm hoping that it's just going to be a really good kickstart for those who are interested in sand tray and being able to do this work, whether you're working in the school, whether you're working in an agency, in a private practice, that all of these, and really so many of the play therapy interventions are applicable for young children all the way up to teens and to adults. Oh yeah. It, it works across the lifespan. I mean, I'm for that. I mean, <laughs> I was like, sand tray and play therapy is is uh, play is, is good for the nervous system. We can experience safety and distress at the same time. So we could address things that otherwise are inaccessible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like the nature stuff, I'm really excited. Like we're going to be doing like shadow art and um, just, yeah, nature mandalas. You know, the rainbow walks that I got from Shuri Sphere and just ways of how we are grounding, you know, when I think of the three R's, just going back to the three R's that, right? Nature is our co-regulator. Stand tray is our co-regulator. You know, we like, how are these different pieces also adding to that co-regulation when we're looking at that bottom up approach and just I'm just so thrilled to just be in community with like-minded people who just, you know, love this work. Yeah. And a taste of Tammy Van Hollander is going to be incredible. I was just watching the video on like um, forest bathing and the, the doctor that was um, talking about the benefits of forest bathing was talking about like they did studies and the, um, the nervous system was more regulated. There was more capacity, a cognitive capacity afterwards. So it truly is co-regulator, sometimes even an external regulator. Yeah. Nature is like incredible. Absolutely. And another one is books, which is a wonderful, right? Co-regulator. So we're going to be, we're going to be bringing bibliotherapy in. We're going to be bringing mindfulness in. So just so many, so many different pieces. You have a book coming out on books. <laughs> you have some I I do. We'll see. Hope fingers crossed sometimes, um, maybe 2024. Um, it's, it's, it's in the works. Yeah. 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 You go back and make it just right. So it's the best it can be. That's where I'm at with my book too. It's like, you don't even see things until somebody else looks at it and go back, fix it. And then by the time it's done, it's like, wow, this that's a great. Yes, great it's in thing. the editor's hands, so we will we will see what they come back with. So, but that's that's super exciting to, um, you know, be with an official editor and to be able to, you know, really be able to do that. So, I'll share more when when that happens. I <laughs> yeah, we we'll have to have you back on, and even to get on this episode is funny. Like um, we're trying to get the audio working, and your volume was down. I thought it was my microphone because it just broke this weekend. So. I'm glad we got to record this one. Yeah. <laughs> work. <laughs> me too. Me too. Well, I love you. We're almost out of time. But before we go, I want to make sure people know where to go to learn more from you. Maybe like your website address yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So, um, and Jackie, I was talking to you about, so you may find me on my Facebook page that was actually hacked. Oh. And if anybody leaves any messages, I do not get them. So if anybody is responding on Tammy's play therapy and sand tray therapy page, I, it is not me and I am unable to do anything about it. So that's really been a concern, but you guys can go on to mainlineplaytherapy.com. You could subscribe to my newsletter. I don't send out many, but I send out some. Um, and I'm on Instagram under Tammy Van Hollander. And I have my YouTube channel. I haven't done a YouTube in a while. Um, also, 
Yeah. So if you go, I probably should remove the Facebook um, part on my uh, website, but then it will link you to YouTube and Instagram and LinkedIn and all of those different pieces. So um, yeah, I'd be happy to chat with anybody who wants to reach out and has any questions for me. And I know you have some Santry training sets also. You really work hard to try to, like for our field, to keep people educated and in the know. I just think that's beautiful. I love, love your passion and I love the way you go above and beyond. Like you're always doing something, <laughs> like literally. <laughs> Thank you. That kind of sounds like somebody else I know. <laughs> for real, for real. <laughs> I know it. All right, Tammy, thank you so much. And um, I'm excited to see your TED Talk, excited about everything you have going. Thank you so much, Jackie. And it is such a pleasure to be here and just keep up all the beautiful work that you are doing and putting out there in this world. Oh, thank you. If I could get the microphone to work every once in a while. <laughs> all right, take care. Bye-bye.